while we're in this conversation, we're going to be talking about how to build successful legal teams. Maybe it's obvious or maybe sometimes not. Why should attorneys focus on the roles and characters in their teams? I think the success of how a case will play out is in large part due to the teams and how the teams are managed and how the teams are put together. So it's important to have the right mix of people, both from a personality perspective and from a skill set perspective. And then it's important. It's one thing to build a great team. It's another thing to maintain a great team. So to me, one of the first matters I worked on in the firm happened to be a larger matter that was cross firm people in LA, people at that time I was in New York. And I saw firsthand how important it is to build and maintain a great team. And then I've just been drawn to those matters going forward. And I guess the skill set I'd like to say that I have honed over the years and started, I also was like student body president, for example. So I've always been somebody who likes to organize people, get people together and have them all row in the same direction. Yeah. So Daniel, just jumping in here, use the hub and spoke metaphor here for our title as well. What do you mean by hub? Every team needs a hub. I've learned over time it's important not to be a single hub to your wheel. And then all the spokes are obviously the different people and in and, and parts of a team that um, make up the whole, right? So the hub is the leader in the middle who has a, a sense of stuff that doesn't always have the deepest layer of information on each of the areas of the spoke, but is making sure that there is somebody in the center who understands enough about everything to spot issues as they come up and make sure there is a cohesive and unified approach and strategy overall to the matter. And that is what I think is key is it's important to have somebody who's in the weeds enough to be in the team in the trenches, but also have enough vision to be able to see where all the pieces fit together and how best to line them up to achieve winning. In this case, obviously, my role, legal strategy. Tell me more about the spokes and the wheel analogy. So look, it just depends on what kind of matter you're working on. I sometimes manage and work with teams of 25 other attorneys, including 20 associates. So they're all the spokes and you want to make sure that they are know enough about what is going on overall because you don't want to be having, and I've learned this firsthand, you don't want that hub, that person in the middle. Ideally, you don't want it to be one person. Depending on how big the team is, that's doable. But for really large matters, there's only so much time in the day. There's only so much that one person can take. I've learned that firsthand. As much as you want to be in the center, it's important that you are pushing work out into the spokes and making sure that then it comes back into kind of that hub and, and you get that cohesive unified strategy. But it's important to make sure that you build those spokes with the right people. And at a law firm, that'll mean obviously different varying levels, junior associates, mid-level, seniors, paralegals, right? Third-party vendors, I'm sure we'll get to that. And then, so you need the breadth of experience and then the expertise. And maybe you're going to have a set of people, and I've seen clients now who are organizing themselves this way too, much more like document discovery focused. And those people are in one area. And then there's focus, you know, more of the legal briefing, admin law, the legal team. Obviously, these things need to intersect. That's why it's essential that you have the right people, not person, depending on how large the matter is, at the center to make sure it kind of all comes together. But the spokes are, are made up of all the different, and even partner, right? We have different partners um, who have different expertise, experts, right? You'll have people come in and really focus on some of the expert work. Those are your spokes, and they are essential to the process. They keep the wheel moving. I agree hundred percent. So specifically with respect to the associates, how do you identify those types of individuals and their specific skills early on? My experience at the firm, we have a kind of a methodology here called the free market system. Nobody is assigned work, even as an associate. They ask for work, they knock on doors, they pick up phones, they email and likewise, partners or senior associates will go out to people that they have heard of by way of reputation. Certainly, at the most junior level, if you've had a strong summer associate year, that news trickles up. I also find that the associates who knock on your door or reach out to you for a lunch or a drink or whatever, in my experience, are usually the go-getters, but the go-getters who also deliver because they understand and appreciate that this is in reality, like all of this, the building a great team, it all comes down to interpersonal connections 
which have certainly been impacted with COVID and people not coming to the office as much. Here in my office, I am fortunate I live close and I'm here every day. Harken back to when I was a junior associate mid-level, I can't imagine how I would learn how to be a good lawyer if I was not in person observing and engaging with senior associates and partners. But this is the new world we live in. Lots of Zooms. Your reputation is everything you have. From a summer associate program to knocking on those doors, and then obviously anything else. Once you've worked with someone that's good, if you find someone who's really skilled and you also work together well from a personality perspective, again, my firm's free market system breeds that because then you go back to them more often, they come to you. First impressions, I can't say enough how much those matter. Not to say that they can't be overcome, but in my experience, that's how I build the right team, at least at the junior level. That's interesting. Obviously, there's the core competency, the hard skills, and then there sounds like there's some branding and marketing strategy as well. I guess you're right. Internal marketing, there are soft skills here that are pretty hard to teach. It's just the reality. People can be the top of their class in law school, but if they don't work well in a team, that's not going to take them very far at our firm. At any endeavor, quite frankly, but really, again, when I'm thinking about these very large cases that I've help lead over the years, the standouts, the ones who get the best experience too, right? Ones who are in the room when we're interviewing a witness or we're having a client strategy conversation from junior on up are the people who have more of those soft skills.